That's why we're going to talk about a little record called Nevermind mm. by a band called Nirvana. Uh, it came out on September 24th, 1991. I wrote about uh, uh, Nirvana this week. I wrote a big piece about, it was about 5,500 words on like my 40 favorite Nirvana songs. And I, I wrote about this in the lead that the, the, the tough thing or, you know, the, the, the trouble with writing about Nirvana at this point is that there really is nothing original to say about them. I mean, they are one of the most discussed and maybe even over-discussed bands in rock history, Mm -hmm. even though they were only together for seven years. They put out three studio records, not a huge body of work, uh, but there's multiple documentaries, books, box sets. uh, You know, this is very well-trod ground. And for myself, I think what I tried to do to make Nirvana feel fresh is just to remember that they're a, they just wrote kick-ass songs that are a lot of fun to listen to and if you could just appreciate them as rock music in a way it kind of saves them because I mean Nirvana obviously you could never call them an underrated band but there is something about them where the narrative is so sort of hardened around them that it stifles conversation about Nirvana and it makes them I think less fun in a way and and I know for critics, I think it's not interesting for critics to talk about Nirvana anymore. And in a way, I think that, again, they're not underrated, but I wonder to what degree, like with a record like Nevermind, because there's nothing really new you can say about it, if it just, if, if people are just sort of like blasé about the record's great, it's like, yeah, it's great, fine, whatever, in the same way that we are about Sgt. Pepper or... uh you know, never mind the Bullocks or, you know, any record yeah. that's just been discussed. I think with, death. you know, with never mind specifically, when we, if, if you think about it on the level of, say, uh, you know, Sgt. Peppers or like Dark Side of the Moon, I think those albums kind of redefined like what rock music was capable of doing in the studio. Whereas, never mind, um, it is so familiar sounding, even 30 years after the fact. But like the large, the biggest thing to talk about is its legacy, is how. And it is how it completely changed the um, atmosphere for rock music. I mean, you, you, I, 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 in, in a way, I think it's like almost like sometimes I'm like still shocked at how much this changed things. Like, for example, like, you know, I'll listen to like Helmet when I'm in the gym and it's like it's because of Nirvana and strictly because of Nirvana, a band like that was like the subject of a seven figure bidding war. But as far as like, is this un- like if we're talking about like never mind the record i i do think it is fair to say that it maybe not like underrated is the right word because like how could you possibly rate it higher but i think in the in the in the indie cast you know universe discussion i think it's been like somewhat below in utero or unplugged because in utero is like if you're an indie leaning person like that's the record you know because it's the one where they react against their fame and they're clearly not into it and it's got that raw production you know even at the time Kurt Cobain thought that you know, never mind was a little bit too slick it's the closest thing Nirvana did to sounding like the Foo Fighters I mean if you can warp the timeline like that um, and also Unplugged has that aura of mystique you know it's the last thing they've done and uh, it pointed to a future where maybe they're not making like rock music anymore. Maybe they're doing automatic for the people. I said this before, but I mean, revisiting Nevermind, I was, it was fun because I hadn't heard it in a while. And again, I was just trying to kind of go back to the way I heard it when it first came out and not listening to it through the lens of everything we know about mm-hmm. what happened to Kurt Cobain after the fact. I mean, I remember when that record came out, it was just like a really like fun, irreverent, you know, kick-ass record. And just thinking of it that way is just purely a collection of rock songs and stripping away all the narrative and all the pretension. I think that is really the key to appreciating that record. 